Hi, Peter Charles here, Folk for Life, Fly Fishing. And today we're going to do another Euronymph, only I've come to decision about these Euronymphs. I wanted to do a series of nymphs based on patterns shown in books, and I would substitute where necessary because I don't have access to all the materials. Where well, the problem is, I'm finding out I, don't have, I can't even figure out some of the materials. I don't even know what they are. So picking a useful substitute is getting very, very difficult. It gets to the point where I can hardly do any of the patterns with the materials I have at hand. And I'm not going to spend another couple of hundred bucks on materials just to try and do these things and import them in from Europe. It would start to get really silly. So I'm, I'm going to do a few more Euronymphs, and I'm going to do some that are sort of a play on existing patterns, like the Frenchie, for example. The one we're going to do today is going to be a pink peasant tail, which is sort of a Frenchie pattern. And I'm going to do a few others are based on things like the hare's ear and uh, that sort of thing that I've seen other anglers in my neck of the woods use. So instead of trying to duplicate what I'm seeing in these European books, I'm going to try and I'll duplicate stuff that I see locally. And uh, we'll go from there. I'll only do a few. Uh, but they're useful patterns. And I, I think a pattern like this uh, that we're going to do today has a, has a lot of legs. So let's get started in looking at materials. Our hook today is this size 14 Hanuk. Uh, in a jig hook. We're going to use these 3.2 millimeter or 1 8 inch uh, pink beads, slotted beads. I guess you'd call this pink, you can call it fuchsia, something in that ballpark. Hot pink, if you can find hot pink, would it be even better? Our thread is a Viva uh, thread 10 out in dark brown. Our rib is going to be uh, this small copper wire. Go with a small size with these small flies. Uh, the medium just is just too fat to use. The tail on the body is pheasant tail, and we're going to use uh, this pheasant tail ice dubbing. Uh, it's hairline ice dub, and uh, it's in a pheasant tail color. I happen to like it when you mix that dubbing with pheasant tail. It looks quite good. A couple of my previous videos, the bead did not sit well, and the reason for that was the slot was too fat, uh, and there was just too much slop in the bead that, you know, you couldn't keep it centered on the hook. No matter what I did, it would fall one way or the other. So this one's not bad. Uh, this one's got a fairly narrow slot, but it's still got a bit of slop to it. So let's deal with that right off the bat. I'm going to push my thread right into it, and I'm just going to bank up some thread right hard up against that bead. Here we go. Now I'll work my thread back. Now, if we wanted to, we could put a drop of glue on that. Because we put thread in there, we've got something for the glue to stick on. So we could actually make that even more secure. But that'll hold reasonably well. That'll keep that bead from shifting around and moving too much. So it'll be basically solid in position. So next, our copper wire. Work the thread back. Now for a pheasant tail, uh, take, you know, three or four, about four barbs. And if you end up with five, who cares? Okay, here, the length of the tail will depend. If you're looking at a crawler nymph, and I think really sh you should think of this as a crawler nymph style, what you can do is put a few wraps at, right at the very back there, just make a little bit of a bump. And leave the tail fairly long and put some really tight wraps in here. And you can see how that causes the tail to go. And that's the appearance that you get with a crawler nymph. Now bring your thread forward. Now, as I said before, I often like to use hackle pliers on my pheasant tail barbs and I'll just spin them up a little bit and I'll begin to wrap. And my tail has shifted a little bit but that's okay we'll fix that.
I've moved my copper rib and I'll just move those over. Bring your copper ribbing in front of the tail and don't bring it over the tail because it'll just undo that splay that we've added. It will just undo that. Now, I don't have the thumbs to wind this off, but what you can do sometimes, if you don't have the thumbs like this, you can use hackle pliers to do it. That works to spin it off. Put a couple of extra wraps in there. Now we come in with our pheasant tail eye stub. I really begin to like this hairline eye stub. It's, uh, it goes on pretty good. Don't overdo this. We're not putting on a, a thick thorax here. There we go. And now we whip finish. Uh, I'm gonna add one more just to be on the safe side. Okay, there. that's a, a Frenchy style of pheasant tail uh, with a nice bright pink bead. We've got that flash in the, in the eye stub. Uh, it goes on nice and easily, as you can see. It's quite easy to do. Uh, you could, in that hole, you could drop in a little bit of glue, and that'll help hold everything together. Uh, whether you want to use um, this thick loon or you want to use CA glue, whichever you want. Just that'll help keep it everything together and I'll keep the uh, threads from uh, falling out. Uh, on that, very simple uh, little fly and you can knock them together quick and I think it should be highly effective. I mean anything with pheasant tail works and if you've got a little bright spot so much the better. Cheers.